New Optics Film Festival is an annual film festival for teens all over the world, presented by Notre Dame High School since 2002. Now, in its 20th year, 80 films were submitted from high schoolers all over the world. Our New Optics Film Festival screening and awards will take place on the evening of Friday, March 26, 2022, online at 6 p.m. Fancy attire is encouraged, but not required, but camera is on, so smile. The day after, Saturday, March 27th, student filmmakers will attend a virtual workshop and feedback sessions with film and TV directors, editors, and cinematographers. For more information, please email ndhsvideos at gmail.com. Good morning, Knights. Today is March 25th, and I'm your guest anchor, Devin Skibinski. That was a commercial about our upcoming film festival happening this weekend. For more information, please email ndhsvideos at gmail.com. For your show today, Bella Mancini and I are anchoring as president and secretary of the Equality Now Club at Notre Dame. Thanks, Devin. For those of you who don't know what the Equality Now Club is, it is a club on campus whose mission is to create a just world for both women and girls by promoting the education of sex trafficking, sexual violence, and the justice for women. As we close out National Women's Month, we thought it would be good to spotlight an organization that associates with the goal of equality now, just to show you what we're promoting on campus. Like Devin said, a little later in the show, we'll show you one of the organizations that we are supporting this year. I'm sure that you heard about a team that just got a new field, our girls softball team. We will stop by and take a look at what's going on with them and check out a fun place to go hang out with your friends. In addition to it being National Women's Month, it is also, also National Cerebral Palsy Awareness Month. Stay tuned, Knights. We are just getting started. Women's softball is an excellent team, and for the first time, they have their own home field. We decided to visit them and learn more about their season. For our Quality Now Spotlight, we wanted to acknowledge an issue that is happening everywhere, even in our own communities. To raise further awareness, we interviewed a woman who works with human trafficking prevention. Foreman here to give you an inside scoop at what the women's varsity softball team practice looks like. Come along to Encino Franklin Fields to see what it's really all about. After school practice is very regular for the softball team. When I had the privilege to get a look at what the practice looked like, there was a lot of coordination exercises and team building. Let's see what the seniors, Kayla Corey and Sarah Dennis had to say about how the teams helped them evolve and grow into who they are today. This team is a family. We have all four grades on the team, and we're not afraid to tell, tell each other hi at school. We've definitely grown a lot closer to each other this season. We just got a new field this year, a little farther away, but all that means is that we have more time to do some team bonding in the cars. Uh, great, great field. We love it. We can't wait to have you guys come out and see it too. We've met a lot of great people on this team, a lot of people that are going to go on to do great things in softball, and I'm definitely going to be excited to be in the stands and cheer them on, stay as a family, grow with them, watch them grow, and definitely come back to see some of their games. And I am currently committed to Aurora University for softball, so next year I will be going outside of Chicago and be playing my four years there, and I can't wait to see the next stage of softball and yeah, I'll definitely come back and see some games here when I'm back from break. The team plans to work really hard and advance into mission leagues. Be sure to check out their next game. Well, Knights, I hope that you enjoyed getting an inside look at the women's varsity softball team and can hopefully come out and support them at a few games. Thanks for watching. This is Grace Borman signing out for NDTV. Hey Knights, I'm the president of the Equality Now Club at Notre Dame and today I got the opportunity to interview Bonnie who works with human trafficking in our community. Let's see what she has to say. Hi, my name is Bonnie Lee. I work with iEmpathize.org, which is a nonprofit 
dedicated to helping youth who have been exploited. I am also the chair of the LA Human Trafficking Task Force, and I think it's really important to know because a lot of people right now don't quite understand what human trafficking is. They think it's something that happens like from the movie Taken, where you're in Eastern Europe somewhere and somebody grabs you off the street. So it is happening here in our backyards and in our local communities. And there's two ways that you can be human trafficked, through labor trafficking, but you can also get trafficked through sex trafficking. And what I realize is that a lot of these kids that are being sex trafficked are at a very young age. So a lot of them don't even know what it is to be trafficked. And they don't even know that they're being trafficked until it's too late. So groups like I Empathize, we go to uh, group homes or schools that are vulnerable to exploitation. We want to educate the girls and the boys and give them tools, teach them what a trafficker looks like. So just to give you a, a glimpse of what I did this morning is I work very closely with a girl who is 13 years old. I just met with her on Saturday. I got news in the middle of the night last night that she had actually run away from the group home that she was living at. The minute you run away and you're out on the streets, there is a one in six chance that you will be trafficked. And we've spent a good amount of morning heart sick because we know that she's at tremendous risk for being trafficked. Kids like you in the community to be a part of organizations and nonprofits and do things like youth mentoring and um, involving yourselves in their lives. When you get involved with them, in fact, I often find that they teach you more about life, compassion, and empathy than vice versa because it really does make a difference. Thank you so much, Bonnie, for taking the time to teach us a little bit more about human trafficking and how we can help. This is Devin Skabinski signing out for NDTV. Thank you, women's softball, and good luck on the rest of your season. Thank you also to Bonnie for inspiring us to get involved in our community. It is so important to be aware of human trafficking throughout our society. March is also Cerebral Palsy Awareness Month, and today is Cerebral Palsy Awareness Day. Hey Knights, March is Cerebral Palsy Awareness Month, and today, March 25th, is the official Cerebral Palsy Awareness Day. Let's take a look at some facts and statistics about this disorder. Cerebral palsy is a disorder that affects a person's ability to move and maintain balance. There are fewer than 200,000 cases in the U.S. per year, and there's no cure. People with cerebral palsy can live 30 to 70 years old, and the condition lasts for life. My nephew Ben has cerebral palsy. He's seven years old and cannot perform everyday tasks that we take for granted on his own, such as walking and eating. He has a wheelchair and a nurse that assists him in these tasks. Despite these challenges, he's one of the happiest kids I know and is always smiling. His love for Marvel, especially Captain America, gets him through his toughest moments. If you know someone with cerebral palsy, make sure to show them some love. This is Chiara Santa Pietra reporting for NDTV. Ben is such an amazing kid, and we hope that you are more educated on cerebral palsy. Last weekend, Carmela Sherman and Frankie Smith took an adventure to a fun spot that you can go with your friends. Let's go take a look. Hey Knights, looking for a fun, unique, and creative activity to do with friends? We have the perfect thing for you. Last weekend, Carmel and I had a chance to visit Color Me Mine in Beverly Hills. It's located on Beverly Drive in a happening area with so many different restaurants and stores. We were greeted by a nice employee who showed us around to all the different things that we could paint. Everything was labeled with the price, so there was no surprises at the end. There were so many options and even some professional examples for some inspiration. I chose a plate and Carmela chose a butterfly and then after that we went over to the paint station to get some colors. A side note that there are many Color Me Mine locations including ones in Studio City, Encino, and Glendale. After choosing our colors we headed over to our paint station where there was a ton of brushes and a bowl of water for us to paint with. There was no time limit for how long we could be in there so we just took our time. Painting at Color Me Mine was such a fun and creative activity to do with friends. Plus, you won't be sitting on your phones. It was such a fun activity to catch up over, and afterwards you can go and get dinner on Beverly Drive. If you don't want to go in person, they have kits that you can take to go. They let us know that it would take around two weeks for our creations to be fired and ready. 
We hope you enjoyed seeing our little adventure and hopefully this gave you some inspiration for this weekend's plans. This is Frankie Smith reporting for NDTV. Color Me Mine looks like such a fun place to go. I'll definitely be going this weekend. Hey Knights, how well do you know your geography? Reporters Lily Conway and Gavin Nassif went around campus to ask students and teachers if they knew countries based off their shape. What country is this? That looks like Greenland. I'm gonna go with my partner. I have no clue. Argentina. Greenland. Greenland. God, I hope that's not Ireland because I'm almost 100% Irish. That is correct. Sorry, I'm just trying to find like... <laughs> so our first country is this one over here. All right, that looks like a boot. Italy. Yeah, Sicily. Sicily. Yeah. Italy. Italy. That's correct. I'll say Spain. I know it's not Spain. That looks like Canada. Is there a pass option? Like swipe? Hmm. Oh, Iran? Final guess? Yeah. This one is Brazil. I was going to say that too. Okay. <laughs> Brazil. China. Brazil. Did I say that? I totally said that. I That's what Brazil looks like. What about this one? Oh my gosh. It's not the U.S. making me look like a fool. <laughs> That's an upside down USA. Oh yeah. <laughs> the American education system failed us. I also want to swipe. Okay. Uh, There's a commentary right on our we're culture right today right as we're all upside down right now. What are we doing? Afghanistan? I don't know. This one is the United States just flipped upside down. Oh my gosh, is that what it is? Yeah. You're kidding. Thank you. I think that's it actually. <laughs> well, that's our show for this week, Nights. We hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for tuning in. Make sure that you check out the film festival this weekend. There will be a special screening of award-winning student films, and on Saturday, there will be a Q&A with industry professionals. You don't want to miss it. I'm guest anchor Devin Skavinsky. And I'm Bella Mancini. Have a great weekend, Nights.